Top stories, Ethiopians hailed for relentlessly supporting construction of GERD. Tanzania to provide internet access across the country. Hello, welcome to EBC News. I'm on Menengada. Board Chair of Ethiopian Electric Power says the public is pouring overwhelming support for the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Eager to see the completion of the colossal dam, the people have so far raised some 11 billion bre for the noble cause. Sadat Mohamed Sani had that story from Enna. Board Chair of Ethiopian Electric Power, Dr. Debrezion Gabramikal, said Ethiopians from all walks of life have continued supporting the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam with the aspiration to see the completion of the project. Since its inception in 2011, the public raised 11 billion bur for the construction of the colossal project. The Brazilian added different platforms have been implemented to increase the participation of the public. Whenever assessments are organized for the Grand Dam, the participation of the public is overwhelming. For instance, when the Girl Trophy tours in the country, millions express readiness to support. Even in some parts of the country where security issues prevail, millions are providing support. Dr. Debrazion dubbed the support of the public servants from their salaries as magnificent. He also mentioned the need to design more platforms to keep up the momentum. The support from the people is still continued without any interruption. However, we need to have a strong leadership that can lead and organize the campaign. Plus, we need to design accessible platforms for the public. Now the Grand Dam is 64% complete and its two units are expected to generate power this physical year. In a related story, Diaspora Tombola Lottery for the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is to be launched soon. According to GERD National Public Coordination Office, the lottery aims to sustain the diaspora support for the construction of the dam. Here is Taba Weirda for the details. Ethiopia's colossal project, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, is underway with domestic financial resources. A Tombola lottery is now to be launched to help Ethiopians in the diaspora sustain their contribution for the national project. The diaspora tombola contains a number of valuable awards, including resident houses. Each ticket sells for 10 US dollars. For this diaspora tombola, we have now plots of land and houses at hand. An individual gave us a G plus two house to be awarded for the first winner. All the resources for the tombola are mobilized. Ticket printing is also completed. The office has reached the Ethiopian diaspora communities in various ways for the cause. <laughs> Information is relayed to the Ethiopian diaspora using various mechanisms, including booklets, hard and soft copy forms. The Renaissance Dam Day is also celebrated among the diaspora communities. It is through this and other means that the diaspora support for the dam construction is kept on track. He also announced that the ticket sale will stay until June 7, 2018. In addition to their professional support, the Ethiopian diasporas have contributed over 800 million for the construction of the dam, Hailu added. Welcome back. Women entrepreneurs say the growing saving culture is changing women's livelihood in Ethiopia. They have saved over 22 billion bur at the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia alone over the past four years. Jerusalem Beza has more from Anna. 
Bedria Shamsu is a resident of Addis Ababa. She and her three friends started a small-scale business that sells households and food items with initial capital of bir 5,000. They have now saved over 200,000 bir. Bedria says she always encourages women to develop the culture of saving to improve their way of living. <laughs> Being able to involve in such practices by itself helps everyone promote interaction with people and create market linkage to ensure profitability. As their income has grown over time, Bedria and her friends are moving to Esher to better expand the business and open a bakery. Another entrepreneur, Leunesh Megersa, started a small business that produces and packs food items at her home with about 6,000 beer. She has now managed to widen her business securing a shed in Addis Ababa. <laughs> Now, I do not expect my husband to cover all the expenses alone. I am able to help him and my three kids without much stress. Women should not confine themselves at their homes. They have to engage in every small activity to change their lives. Then it will be easier for them to expand their businesses. Tegist, along with her four friends, is engaged in a shoemaking business with an initial capital of 20,000 per five years back. They have aiming to improve their business as the government has pledged to give them credit and machinery, which will be vital for them to produce better quality shoes. We are registering viable changes in our livelihood. Our business is growing from time to time in a very encouraging manner. To date, more than 2.3 million women have saved over 22 billion bur at the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia loan since the launching of a special account to women entrepreneurs four years ago. The bank is working on boosting the economic benefits of women through awareness creation campaigns at the grassroots levels. We use marketplaces, traditional financial schemes and gatherings to train the women on saving. We are also working with localities to encourage women to develop the culture of saving. Women across the nation are benefiting from the growing saving culture in improving the livelihood of their communities at large. Ethiopian Plant Protection Society states that it's conducting successful activities in preventing pests and weeds caused by climate change. The association has celebrated its Silver Jubilee anniversary at Haramaya University. It was noted at the event that over the last 25 years, the society has conducted different research in paste and weed preventions and also distributed the outputs to the farmers. Currently, the society is also working with various stakeholders, including Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources, in delivering research outputs for the farmers, as well as working on new weed varieties. Walaita Sodong University is training students on how to sustain the peaceful learning and teaching activities, thereby creating clean, green and conducive environment. The life skill training is intended to help the university's effort of producing intelligent, skilled and ethical students. Peaceful conflict resolution mechanisms and protection from addiction are among the trainings which students dub helpful. Take a listen. If any conflict happens with the university community are the first to be heard. Anyone from the community might have questions or demands, but we should present them peacefully. That avoids unnecessary damage or injuries. From the past experiences we have seen in other places, it is the students that are most likely to be affected in conflicts. So providing students with such trainings is, I think, right in place share in solving problems. The university is reaffirming its commitment to sustaining similar trainings, especially those prioritizing peaceful conflict resolutions, thereby equipping students with a democratic means of solving problems. We believe peace is a crucial element to ensuring development and democracy in the country. So our duty in shaping the youth is teaching students ways of resolving conflicts peacefully and advocating discussions and other democratic values. So far, we've performed various activities in this regard and we will continue to do so. Now, families of General Robert Napier of Britain handed over Ethiopian treasures which were taken during the 1868 Battle of Magdala to the Addis Ababa University. 
director of Ethiopian Studies Institute with the university, says the artifacts are part of Ethiopia's ancient history and will have vital role to the country, as Jerusalem Beza reports. When Ethiopia and Britain fought at the Battle of Magdala in April 1868, the Ethiopian forces were led by Emperor Tiro II, while the British by General Robert Napier. After winning the battle, British forces had taken various Ethiopian treasures to their country. Now, with the current cordial diplomatic relations between the two countries, Britain has returned some of treasures to Ethiopia. Families of General Napier have handed over the treasures on Friday to the Addis Ababa University Institute of Ethiopian Studies. The wish of our parents when they, they came into the, that uh, part of the family possession to return uh, the items to Ethiopia because they felt it was of much of greater significance in Ethiopia than just remaining in our family. Um, they weren't returned before our, our parents died and they reiterated that it was, it was their wish that these items should be returned. We were aware of our great-grandfather, General Napier, because we grew up, uh, he was my mother's grandfather. When my mother was given the artifacts, uh, and became aware of their significance to Ethiopian history because they had come from the court of the Emperor Theodorus. I think she and my father felt that they needed to come back here. And so we have tried for a few years to arrange for this to be made possible. The valuable treasures are said part of Ethiopia's ancient history and benefits the country in a number of ways. These are part of Ethiopian heritage and uh, it is almost 150 years ago these properties almost uh, looted along with others and through time uh, these are elements filling the gap of historical knowledge in terms of their heritage, in terms of the information we have in, and the necklace and the scrolling written manuscript we have here are part of research tools and at the same time part of our heritage. It is good that we have them. What is the significance? Because this is our own identity, elements expressing our own identity, we need them. Ahmed added what Napier's family did is commendable and will strengthen the people-to-people -people ties between the two nations. This family claimed and truly underscored that they are descendants of General Napier. It's something appreciable. The significance is both of heritage, diplomacy, human, successful, peaceful relations. The Institute of Ethiopian Studies has been enhancing ties with many countries of the world to get all Ethiopia's heritage abroad returned home. The leaders of Africa's 55 countries are set to make history on March 21, 2018 by launching the African Continental Free Trade Area. The launch will take place at an extraordinary meeting of the African Union Heads of State to be held in Rwanda's capital, Kigali. The agreement is expected to make the continent the largest free trade area created since the formation of the World Trade Organization. The new AU chairperson, President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, said it is a historic pact which has been nearly 40 years in the making and it represents a major advance for African integration and unity. Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mohammed, noted that the African Continental Free Trade Area will strengthen Africa's position in global trade, making the continent one of the largest economies in the world. This will enhance its capacity to interact on equal terms with other international economic blocs. The Free Trade Area is a flagship project of Agenda 2063, the African Union's long-term vision for an integrated, prosperous and peaceful Africa which eyes to transform the fortunes of millions of Africans by boosting trading ties among African nations.
Tanzania's state-owned telecommunications company embarked on a countrywide fiber to the home to provide individual buildings with high-speed internet access. The $18 million worth project is to be implemented in Dar es Salaam and Dodoma regions with plans to cover the whole country. Jerusalem Beza has more from CGTN. The revolution will not be televised, instead it has started inside the office of TTCL, Tanzania's government-owned telecommunications company. Home by home, they have started installing ultra-fast fiber internet services for residents' use. The FTTH, or Fiber to the Home, project is a first for the country. We are intending to penetrate each and every village, um, ward, and any city which is in Tanzania to give affordable reliable connectivity to, to, the, to the Tanzanians themselves. This will spur, will, will spur growth. The FTTH network will be able to access broadband connection speeds up to 50 Mbps. The $18 million project has started with 1,000 homes in Dar es Salaam and Dodoma. Engineers at the company say the fiber to the home project will be a catalyst to industrialization. Uh, and enabling uh, broadband service to each and every home, we are supporting uh, other sectors in the economy to be efficient and productive and be able to deliver rich applications and uh, other innovative uses of the technology in order to fulfill uh, each and every application that we, are, we need to run over the internet. Experts say the domestic internet service is still considered a luxury for the majority of low-income Tanzanians and the price is key. Starting a 45 USD, customers can get unlimited 10 Mbps monthly internet services talk time and access to download, connect from various platforms. Well, this system is much better because it doesn't cut off. It's a continuous system, it's unlimited and I can use it even outside my place because they give me a chip which I use it to, to connect the internet outside my home also. The new service is part of the revamping of the company. The aim is to start planting the seeds for the Internet of Things or IoT web where devices are connected and integrated. Now what we are doing is to preparing that environment. So towards uh, 2020 is where you can realize the full potential of the IoT industry. As data connectivity is becoming a central focus for economies of today's world, the government hopes that the FTT project will increase digital inclusion and create a society as fast as the fiber networks they use. More and more Ugandans are shopping online instead of traditional brick and mortar outlets, and the gateway for many of this is their cell phones. The 2018 Ugandan Mobile Report released by e-commerce giant Jumia this week, partially attributes the trend to the reduction in the cost of smartphones. Kfleyo Sabeb presents the story from CGTN. Online shopping using mobile phones is now a routine for many Ugandans. According to industry insiders, people choose to buy these mobile devices and they are available at affordable price points. Manufacturing in China and Taiwan definitely uh, lowered the cost of uh, production and uh, that's, that translates into cheaper handsets. But it's also a matter of technology. Technology is becoming cheaper. The report further showed that the majority of Internet users in African countries like Uganda prefer to access the web using their mobile phones. The new shift, coupled with the reduction in the cost of internet, is driving more Ugandans to conduct business in the online retail price. Ugandans are buying a lot of phones, uh, a lot of TVs and home appliances, and a lot of uh, laptops. But we're also seeing growth in areas like fashion. We see a lot of growth in men's fashion primarily, and other categories. But as the mobile penetration increases, the possibility of more people conducting business online raises an issue of internet safety. However, the Uganda government says it has put in place punitive laws to track those who use the online platform to do wrong things. And you've seen the Computer Misuse Act catching many people, especially people who've been doing ATM frauds and some of the SIM card frauds that you've been hearing about. So in, in that way, the government has helped put in place a regulatory environment to enable uh, people play online. The report showed that as of March 2017, Uganda's mobile economy amounted to $12.2 billion. 
With mobile penetration expect to increase due to further price cuts of both the internet and handsets. A lot of more Ugandans are expected to take advantage of more convenient and mobile efficient solutions. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.